Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my four month long-term use review of the Moto 360. Now I know you're probably thinking this is a really late review and it kind of is, but the first time I actually did this review was in October of last year, but it was a really bad video for one, but more importantly, my thoughts on the Moto 360 at the time were very different from how a lot of other YouTubers were portraying it. So I just chose not to publish it. Uh, I just didn't have the balls to go against the grain like that. But now that I've used it for four months, I feel pretty comfortable to share it with you. So yeah, here we go. The first thing I wanna talk about is the design. Now, I am I like watches. I'm not a huge watch guy. I don't have you know lots of expensive watches or anything, but I like watches and I wear them pretty regularly. Now I totally understand how everyone's opinion on aesthetics differ, but to me, when the screen of the Moto 360 is off, which it is like 99% of the time, I don't think it's a particularly good looking timepiece. I mean, if you compare the Moto 360 with any of the watches here, and keep in mind, most of these are like 150 to 200 bucks, the Moto 360 looks really dull. Now when the screen is on, it's a whole other story. I'm not gonna bore you with specs, but the screen looks really good for what it's supposed to do. It's visible in broad daylight and the automatic brightness adjustment works really well. And I find that that round form factor, it's, it's great. It, I think it's the way to go for smartwatches and it's pretty responsive to touch. Now the horizontal bar, that flat tire thing, like others have mentioned, after using it for even a few days, you really do stop noticing it. There's a lot of cool faces to choose from. I actually like the stock Motorola ones a lot, but as I'm sure you know by now, the screen is a huge battery hog, so you basically want to keep this thing off as much as possible. Let's talk durability. With an IP67 rating, this thing is quite resilient to the elements. I've showered with this thing, I have gone swimming with it a half dozen times, and with no water damage. I really think that for a regular urban life, it's going to be tough to give this thing water damage. One thing that kind of bugs me is the factory leather strap. I think it looks pretty cool, but it shows wear really quickly. I've been through two of them, this is my third one, but I never installed it because I actually found a rubber strap from Clockwork Synergy that I much prefer. I wear my Moto 360 when I'm running or if I go to the gym just for the heart rate sensor, but if you're an active person and you're using your watch then, I really recommend getting a rubber strap because leather and sweat don't go that well together. I mean, just ask Ross Geller from Friends, he'll tell you. Now, I've actually worn this thing to a paintball match once and I got shot right on the screen. Like this thing, these things travel at like 300 feet per second and it, gets, it hit so hard that I actually felt the impact behind the watch on my wrist. And I thought for sure, for sure the screen was gonna bust, but I know I was wiping the paint off and I was like, oh wow, it works perfectly. And I was, I was actually very impressed by that. So I think Motorola did a great job on durability. I wanna talk a little bit about the UI. The notification system works reasonably well, but if you get a lot of notifications in between checking your watch, the UI can get bogged down. So if you're a big deal and you suddenly get a bunch of text messages and Twitter notifications, YouTube activity and emails and calendar alerts, it takes quite a bit of swiping to clear all that stuff off your screen. So just to showcase this, I didn't clear my notifications for half a day, but you can see how the UI can get kind of gnarly when it's full. You can send short texts and emails to your contacts, but I never really enjoyed using it. I mean, it just felt really clumsy and honestly, I felt dorky sending messages like that. The calendar integration is kind of cool. Some watches have indicators to show upcoming events, but I found myself referring to the phone regularly. The Google Now cards actually work quite well on the watch. They fill up your screen properly and all the info is there. It's basically a smaller version of the cards from your phone. There's also a pedometer in there and it seems to work like any other pedometer, but I don't use them much so I'm not sure how good this one is. You also get some basic app control like the music player on your phone. So you can skip to the next track or the previous track and you can also control the volume. But for other third-party apps, like let's say you have a, you know, a Nest thermostat or something and you want to control it with an app on your phone, you actually can't control the app from the watch. You have to, you just basically use your watch to turn on the app on your phone, which is not that cool. But I mean, again, that's just the nature of the watch in its current generation. So in terms of functionality, there's quite a lot of stuff that works pretty well in the Moto 360. So things like the calendar or time management or just even telling time, all that stuff works pretty well. Anything to do with notifications, the Moto 360 can do pretty well. But here's the thing, the Moto 360 does all of these things pretty well. There's something else that does it even better and it's in your pocket, your phone. Every time you get a notification, you only see a snippet of it on your watch. So you have to refer to your phone to get the full story. If you get an email, refer to your phone. If you get a Twitter, refer to your phone. If you wanna control an app, refer to your phone. So basically everything that the watch can do, 
Your phone can do it better, faster, and stronger. So for me, I feel like the usage case is really limited. And I think I'm a pretty regular dude with a regular job, and I don't have hundreds of thousands of YouTube subs and, and Twitter followers and stuff like that, so I don't really need my wrist to be vibrating all the time, notifying me of all these things. The heart rate sensor is pretty cool, but I found that the sensor was kind of hit or miss. I don't know if it's a hair thing. I mean, I actually tried shaving a patch on my wrist for better contact and it didn't really seem to make a difference, but I just don't think the heart rate sensor is super reliable. Now there is one thing I found on the Moto 360 that I actually like on the watch more than the phone function, and that is the ability to take voice dictated notes. So on a phone, you pick up your phone and you say, okay, Google, then you have to wait for the tone. And then you say, take a note to check my applesauce. I don't even have applesauce, but you get the idea. You have to wait for that tone before you can begin your command. Now with Android Wear, it actually does voice buffering. So you don't have to wait for anything. You just say, okay, Google, take a note to check my applesauce. It's just so much faster. Now I'm a pen and paper guy. I constantly write notes on pieces of paper throughout the day just to remind me to do things. And I found that this function was amazing. I found it faster and easier than anything else I've used before. And then when you get to your computer or your phone, you open up Google Keep and there you go. There's a list of all the notes you've made. I'm sure a lot of you know the Moto 360 doesn't have a very good battery life. On average, you're gonna get a day of use out of it. So they recommend that you recharge it every day. Now, a lot of reviewers have kind of shrugged this off as kind of being like, oh, you know, just deal with it. This is the product. But to me, that's a deal breaker because I mean, there's nothing wrong with recharging a device every single day. There are things in our lives that we would need to recharge every day, like our cell phones, our notebooks, if we use those every day, or in the future, electric cars. These are things that are critical to our life. And if we don't recharge them the night before, we get punished for it the next day. So it's worth it to be mindful and to remember to recharge it the night before. But to me, the Moto 360 feels like more of a gadget or an accessory. So even after using it for four months, I still find it weird and a little annoying to recharge it so often but I have to give it up to Motorola because the charging dock looks really cool and it feels really well executed when you put your watch on and it turns into a clock. It also takes about two hours to fully charge up. Introducing useful tech into our lives is a really good thing, but adding techy stuff into our life just for the sake of having more gadgets, I mean, I think that's a pretty ass backwards way of doing things. When I look at the Moto 360, I think, does this make my life easier? Does it make my life more optimized or more organized? Does my workflow become more productive? And aside from the note-taking dictation thing, I think the answer to most of those questions is no. So why am I wearing it? I mean, the screen is cool to look at, but with the battery drain the way it is, I don't, I really don't wanna look at the screen. I think wearables are the future. In fact, I think smartwatches could replace smartphones if the tech was done right. Like kind of how the Galaxy Gear S tried to do, but failed horribly at. But that's the thing. This entire product category is very immature still. So if you've been drawn to these devices and you're on the fence, my opinion is to wait because the Moto 360 was one of the best of the bunch, but it's still a really weak offering. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, I've got to go check up on some applesauce. And yeah, it's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.